Hi, my name is Mary Scholl, and I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist in the Colorado Center for Celiac Disease here at Children's Hospital Colorado. We are proud to offer comprehensive, multidisciplinary care to our patients who are newly or previously diagnosed with celiac disease or non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And today I want to speak about why that multidisciplinary care is so important. Celiac disease is a chronic autoimmune disease which is triggered by gluten, a protein in wheat, rye, and barley. Celiac disease is relatively common, affecting up to 1-3% to of the population, who must then follow a strict, lifelong gluten-free diet. When many people think of celiac disease, they think of gastrointestinal symptoms, including diarrhea, constipation, poor appetite, bloating, nausea, vomiting, or trouble gaining weight or growing appropriately. Many patients do have these gastrointestinal symptoms, but the symptoms of celiac disease can be much broader and affect nearly every organ system. Some patients with celiac disease can present with mood or behavior changes, including irritability, trouble concentrating, anxiety, or depression. Celiac disease can also cause neurologic symptoms such as headaches, fatigue, neuropathy, ataxia, or even epilepsy in rare cases. Each patient with celiac disease has their own unique mix of symptoms, and to make it even more challenging, Many patients with celiac disease have no symptoms at all, even though damage from celiac disease is still occurring. While I was doing my fellowship at Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus, Ohio, I studied healthcare-related quality of life in children newly diagnosed with celiac disease. Quality of life is a person's perception of his or her position in life within the context of societal culture and with respect to his or her own goals and expectations. Healthcare-related quality of life specifically looks at people's perception of the impact of their disease on their physical and emotional health, as well as psychological and social functioning. For this study, we recruited a relatively large sample of children who were recently diagnosed with celiac disease and new to the gluten-free diet. The child and family completed the Pediatric Quality of Life Measure, or PEDSQL, a commonly used measure to survey the impact of a child's condition on their physical, social, emotional, and academic function. Scores on this measure range from 0 to 100, with higher scores indicating better perceived functioning. We compared these scores to published data for two different cohorts, healthy controls and those with general GI conditions such as IBS, functional abdominal pain, and other organic GI conditions such as IBD. For our newly diagnosed celiac disease patients, there was no statistically significant difference between parent-reported and self-reported total scores and subscale scores. Looking here at the self-reported scores for the newly diagnosed celiac disease patients in red compared to the sample of healthy children in orange and the children with non-celiac gastrointestinal conditions in blue, you can see that overall the children with celiac disease had statistically significant lower scores, indicating more perceived difficulties in the child's functioning compared to the healthy children for the overall total score, as well as in terms of physical health, psychosocial health, emotional functioning, and school functioning. The children with newly diagnosed celiac disease had similarly decreased scores as the group of children with other gastrointestinal conditions, including irritable bowel syndrome, functional abdominal pain, and other organic gastrointestinal disease. We then used published suggested clinical cutoff scores to determine whether each celiac disease patient's subscale score was clinically significant. Overall, about half of newly diagnosed celiac disease patients had a significantly low total score, meaning that their quality of life was severely impacted by their celiac disease. The specific domains of impact included physical functioning, then school and emotional functioning, followed by social functioning. As the gluten-free diet is lifelong, difficult, and burdensome to follow, we also worry that patients with celiac disease will continue to have decreased health-related quality of life after diagnosis and after following the gluten-free diet for months or years. The amount of gluten that can cause damage to the small intestines is very small, only a crumb or one one-hundredth a slice of bread. 
Not only do people with celiac disease need to avoid more obvious sources of gluten, such as regular bread, pasta, or baked goods, but they also need to be vigilant and careful about trace amounts of gluten from shared cooking or manufacturing spaces or proximity to foods that do contain gluten. So while the treatment of celiac disease may sound simple, follow the gluten-free diet, in actuality, the gluten-free diet can be quite challenging to implement. In addition, food impacts so much of our daily lives and social interactions. People with celiac disease may struggle with feeling different from others and may not want to share details about their medical condition with friends, teachers, or the server at a restaurant, even if it is necessary to share this information to follow the gluten-free diet strictly. Many patients and their caregivers endorse persistent worry over the risk of possible gluten exposures, which can limit their participation in social events, at restaurants, or with traveling. For a patient with celiac disease, every meal or snack must be planned in advance. So the idea of going on an international trip or even just spending a night at a friend's house can feel very daunting. In this study of adults with celiac disease, patients with several chronic medical conditions were asked to rate their perceived treatment burden. The highest perceived treatment burden was from patients with end-stage renal disease who were on dialysis. But the second highest perceived treatment burden was from the patients with celiac disease who were following the gluten-free diet. The gluten-free diet was rated as more burdensome than the treatment for insulin-dependent diabetes, congestive heart failure, inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, and several others. For this reason, we are hopeful that in the future there will be non-diet options for the treatment of celiac disease, but currently there are no effective medications for celiac disease, although much research is ongoing. Despite anecdotal reports of treatment burden in pediatric celiac disease on patients and their families, little research has been done on this topic. A recent systematic review led by our pediatric psychologist, Dr. Germoni, found 12 articles looking at the impact of a child's celiac disease diagnosis on their caregivers. Although the quality of evidence and study designs were variable, several overarching themes emerged, including caregiver responsibility, with one study showing an average of 3.3 hours per week spent preparing gluten-free food for their children, plus additional uncounted time for doctor's visits, internet searches, and support group participation to learn about the gluten-free diet. In several studies, parents and caregivers reported feeling more concerned for their children's health than other parents did, with 68.8% reporting concerns in one study. These concerns were especially magnified when their children were at school or out of their care, as one study found that 76% of parents perceived that their child's school did not adequately understand their child's needs in terms of celiac disease. One study reported that around half of families changed the diet for the entire family out of support for the gluten-free child. Even when this was not done, the financial burden of having the child eat gluten-free was significant, with 93.6% reporting that gluten-free food was too expensive, and 57 to 61.9% of caregivers reporting financial strain on the family budget after a child was diagnosed with celiac disease. Gluten-free foods in the United States are overall 240% more expensive than their gluten-containing counterparts, and in the UK, this number rises to 518% more expensive. Some families wanted to have the whole family eat gluten-free but were unable to afford this. Like parents and caregivers, siblings were also affected with 46% of caregivers in one study reporting an increase in sibling rivalry due to increased attention paid to the gluten-free child. Because the symptoms of celiac disease can be so varied and include both psychosocial and neurologic effects, and because the treatment of a strict lifelong gluten-free diet can be so challenging and burdensome for patients and families, it is crucial that children with celiac disease and their families be supported and helped by an expert team well-versed in celiac disease. This is why we have a dietitian with special expertise in celiac disease give a detailed gluten-free diet education class to all all newly diagnosed patients and families. In addition, we offer a free pre-recorded video course created by our pediatric psychologist educating families on behavioral health and emotional wellness for children with celiac disease.
Approximately three months after families start the gluten-free diet, we typically have them follow up with our multidisciplinary team. Our team consists of a pediatric gastroenterologist specializing in celiac disease, our celiac dietitian, and our pediatric psychologist. After initially needing more frequent clinic visits for the first year of diagnosis, eventually children with celiac disease are able to space out their visits to yearly or every few years once doing well on the gluten-free diet with normalization of their lab tests and resolution of symptoms, although we always remain available for questions or for problems. We particularly like to give additional multidisciplinary support at times of transition, such as starting elementary, middle, or high school, when teenagers start making more food choices on their own and eating out without their parents present, or when young adults are moving out of the house or starting college. I would like to thank our whole team at the Colorado Center for Celiac Disease, especially Dr. Monique Germoni, our pediatric psychologist, and our dietitians Sadie Nagel and Dana Rosnowski, who helped develop our team-based approach to support our families and patients. With good support and education, children with celiac disease can live fulfilling and normal lives while doing everything they want to do and still following a gluten-free diet. For more information or to schedule a visit at the Center for Celiac Disease, please visit our website. Thank you.